I'm a mom, and I love to tell birth stories, particularly my youngest son's birth story. On a Friday afternoon when I started to have contractions, and I was home with my three-year-old and my six-year-old, I called a friend, took the kids over to her house, and waited there for a while while they watched a movie. Eventually, night came, and it became clear that I was indeed going to have a baby that evening. She drove me to the hospital. I got there around 1.30, and to my dismay, I discovered that we were too late for the epidural, and my son arrived less than an hour after we got there. Uh, my OBGYN was fantastic. She held him up, and she said, oh, he is beautiful and perfect, and she handed him to me. Um, now, Ben's birth story doesn't really end there. Uh, about three hours later, I got a knock on the hospital door. The door opened, and a, a man came in, introduced himself as the hospital pediatrician, and he said, you know about the Down syndrome, right? And I said, yes. And he said, great, we're doing some tests, and uh, you know, we'll let you know, and off he went. I did not know about the Down syndrome. <laughs> I, I had had a baby three hours previous, previous to that, and I was just confused. Uh, we had done some prenatal screening early in my pregnancy, and I knew that I had a 1 in 19 chance of having a baby with Down syndrome. But I didn't know for sure. And I knew that when I held my son, my beautiful and perfect son, that, um, that he looked like he might have Down syndrome. But nobody in the room, none of the doctors or nurses, before that hospital pediatrician came in, no one had mentioned that. I remember uh, wondering um, what my life was going to be like. I remember wondering what I was going to tell my husband, what I was going to tell my family. I remember looking at my baby and thinking how beautiful and fragile and sweet he was, and I wondered what his life was going to look like. I wanted so much to protect him from people who might be cruel. I wanted so much for him to have the best life possible. I remember lying in that hospital bed, and I remember uh, feeling alone and uncertain and inadequate and unprepared. Now, estimates vary. There are somewhere between 250,000 and 400,000 people with Down syndrome living in the United States. Uh, 6,000 babies with Down syndrome are born every year, uh, one in approximately 800. But when Ben was born, I just felt like he was the only one. Now, Ben is four years old now. <laughs> he is a trip. He loves basketball, he loves music, he loves to dance, and my life has been significantly changed and expanded and improved because I've gotten to know him and because I've gotten to know so many other people with Down syndrome and their families in the Rio Grande Valley. Now, one thing that happened when I came home is I thought, I don't actually know anything about Down syndrome and I need to find out so I got online and I started doing research, and it turns out that there's an amazing national community for people with Down syndrome. The National Down Syndrome Society had tons of information. There are blogs by moms of babies and adults with Down syndrome. There are videos from the Special Olympics. I read diagnosis story after diagnosis story because I wanted to know that we weren't alone. But the more I got connected online, the more uncomfortable I felt. My friends online were great, but they felt so distant, and they sort of felt imaginary. I really wanted somebody in our real life who could tell me about what life was like with Down syndrome. Now, Ben's therapists were the first people that we knew uh, who connected us to the world of disability. Uh, they would come over once every couple weeks, and they would walk through things with us. They'd assess Ben's strengths and his weaknesses uh, so that we could 
uh, do activities with him that would build up his muscles and help him speak and help him crawl and help him stand. They were his first cheerleaders. They celebrated every milestone with us. And they were our first connection to other families. I asked every time I saw a therapist, do you know anybody else? Are there any other families who have uh, kids with Down syndrome? Where are they? And finally, one of the therapists had seven families sign a waiver, and she gave us each other's names, and we met for the first time at a potluck dinner. Ben was eight months old at the time. He was the youngest kid there, and it was fascinating to see all these other kids. Everybody had a family resemblance to their own family. You could tell who people belonged to. And there were kids who were crawling and kids who were running, kids who were eating pizza, kids who were still eating pureed food. It was just a, a mix of people and abilities, and it was wonderful. We started a parent support group, and we met once a month for about a year. Our little group of seven families grew to about 15 families. And so we started thinking, what could we do? We should do something to build awareness in the valley. That would be great. All right, why don't we have a walk? You know, you get online and you see people having buddy walks and awareness walks, and you think, we could do that. So there's 15 of our families. Maybe we could get 300 people together. You know, that's going to be our goal. If all of us come and we get some bounce houses, we can walk around a park, we can bounce, it'll be great. So two weeks before our first walk in 2013, we had 275 people registered. On the day of the walk, a thousand people showed up. It was amazing. The next year, we had 2,500 people come. I, I was in awe, and I learned two things from this response. The first thing I learned is that there are a lot of people in the Valley with Down syndrome. And the second thing I learned is that a lot of people really care about them. Now, I firmly believe that a strong and supportive community is going to help my son achieve his fullest potential. And I really want the Valley to be a place, a culture and society, that invites people of all abilities to participate. Now, how do we do this? I think there's three things. We welcome people, we respect people, and we include people. So what does welcome look like? I think welcome starts at birth, and it starts with the word congratulations. Every baby is worth being celebrated. My OBGYN gets five stars because she handed my child to me and said, he is beautiful and perfect. I have a friend who received a prenatal diagnosis, and her doctor sat down with her and said, you're having a boy, and now for the bad news and then gave her every possible worst-case scenario. You know, in the Valley, we respect people who are educated and informed, and so doctors' words carry a lot of weight. That moment of diagnosis is remembered by parents with specific detail for years. I, I can now tell you exactly what happened and exactly how I felt, and I'm four years removed. The same is true for moms who are 20 years down the road or 40 years down the road. It doesn't leave you. If a doctor looks at your baby and tells you something about your baby with sadness and regret and limitations, then that affects how a parent views their child. When a parent looks at their child, they may not see or consider the options or the possibilities or the potential in that child. Do you know, in 2011, Dr. Brian Scottco did a study of Americans with Down syndrome and their families, and here's what he found out. 99% of parents and guardians said that they love their child with Down syndrome. 88% of brothers and sisters say they are better people because of their sibling with Down syndrome. 99% of individuals with Down syndrome say that they are happy with their lives. And 97% of individuals with Down syndrome said they liked who they were. Let's respect people with Down syndrome. And respect starts with language. Ben has in inspired more comments than my other two children combined. I have heard, he's an angel. Oh. You've been blessed. I've heard, 
Ay, pobrecito. Poor little thing. I've heard malito, sick, mentally ill. Once, a lady at the dollar store stopped me and said, is he slow? When is that ever okay? Here's my angel. We have a conflicted view of Down syndrome. On the one hand, we think people with Down syndrome are angels and blessings. And on the other hand, oh, pobrecito, right? The truth is, Ben is just Ben. Let's use person-first language. I'd rather you talk about Ben as a boy with Down syndrome than as a Downs kid or a Downs boy. He's just Ben. He's not an angel. He's not a poor little thing. He just is. I also hear the R word, and I just want to make a public service announcement that the R word is never okay to say. It is not acceptable to use that word to describe my son, and it's not acceptable for someone to use that word to describe a difficult situation. If you forgot your keys, if the clerk didn't give you back the right change, if your shopping cart's wheel is stuck, Find another word. Use foolish, ridiculous, unfortunate. There's a whole dictionary full. The last thing I want to tell you is to include people with Down syndrome. Including Ben means being creative. It means thinking about ways that activities can be adapted for the things that he can do physically. We did one obstacle course activity at a sports day where he couldn't jump over the six-inch hurdles. But one of our volunteers looked at it and said, what if we lean that hurdle on its side? And then Ben did everything fine. He crawled through the tunnel, he jumped over that one-inch hurdle, all by himself. He was able to do it successfully and without supports, just a little modification. We need to encourage our teachers to think creatively about the, how they include kids with disabilities. Because the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act says that special education services should be provided in the least restrictive environment, which means that the movement in education now is to have kids with disabilities in the general education classroom. And do you know what difference that makes? Over the last 30 years, kids with disabilities in the regular classroom have better life skills, better social skills, higher academic performance, and better job retention because they are in a typical classroom. And the typical kids in that classroom, they perform better academically when they have kids with disabilities with them. I would like to encourage you to welcome, respect, and include Ben, Ella, Frankie, Daniel, all of these people who have value and can be a part of a powerful community in the valley if we learn to celebrate people of all abilities and give them an opportunity to be a part of who we are. Thank you so much.